Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. I'm Kamiko Love from thebudgetmom.com and today we are gonna be doing a step-by-step -step video on how I stuff my cash envelopes. Today I'm gonna to be showing everything from how do I figure out how much cash to pull out for each envelope, the cash teller slips, what bill denominations I pull out, and we're gonna be stuffing every single one of my envelopes. So the first step in stuffing my cash envelope is figuring out how much cash I need to pull out for my envelopes. So the very first step in the budget by paycheck process of tracking your spending is extremely critical. Not only is it going to tell you what categories you need to use for your budget, but what your first beginning estimates should be for those budgets, your budget limits. So as you can see, if I flip back to May, I have my expense trackers. Over here on the right is the total for my spending for my cash, and I also have one for my checking account expense tracker. When you track your spending, you wanna start your cash envelope limits with what is realistically happening in your life. You can tweak and perfect and decrease those category limits as you go along, but I want you to start where you realistically are because starting where you realistic, realistically are is going to allow you to see the areas where you either have trouble spending or can cut back. So the first step is tracking your spending. Now we are looking at my June budget. Today is June 1st, the day we're shooting this video. Your cash envelopes are your variable expenses, your bills, or your fixed expenses are things that happen month to month. Your variable expenses are a little bit different. These types of categories, they fluctuate from month to month. They're your gas, they're your beauty purchase, there's your clothing, there's your food, there's your household, there's your pet. And you can see with those types of expenses, they're not fixed every month. They go up and down. So we have variable cash envelopes for our spending that look like this. Now you're seeing this inside my Filofax wallet, but essentially having cash and using the cash envelope system makes your spending tangible. It makes it real. You get to see physically how much cash you have left to spend in each one of your uh, variable expense categories, which really does help with asking the hard questions, figuring out your wants versus your needs, this is what has helped me rein in my spending and figure out my spending triggers. So the first step here is figuring out how much you need to pull out for your envelopes. For me, I use seven envelopes. I use food, fun, gas, beauty, miscellaneous, household, and pets. Now, you may notice that, for instance, on my food envelope, I budget for 50 a month, at least I did in June but I'm only pulling out $300, $310 in cash. The rest of my budget limit is left in my checking account because I get a weekly veggie and fruit organic subscription box delivered to my house and that is automatically taken out of my checking account. So once you know what categories you wanna use for your envelopes and what amounts you wanna use for your envelopes, you wanna use a thing called the cash envelope breakdown. This is available in the budget by paycheck workbook. The whole point of the cash envelope breakdown is to allow you to determine what bill denominations you want to use when stuffing your cash envelopes. Why is this important? Let's say for instance, on your fun category. You know you're gonna be going to a fair and you know you're gonna need smaller bills to give to tips, for tips to the people who are running the fair, maybe for rides, maybe for different vendor booths that are at the fair. So you know when pulling out cash for your cash envelopes, you're gonna need a lot of probably $1 bills. You can write on your cash envelope breakdown 
right here that you would need more $1 bills or smaller bills rather than higher bills. It allows you to essentially plan out how you're going to spend that cash in your cash envelope if need be. So I use the cash envelope breakdown to stuff my cash envelopes. Now when I pull out cash from my envelopes, I pull out cash from my variable spending within my budget and my savings. Everything that you're seeing in yellow and white is cash I'm pulling out for my sinking fund savings goals. I save for those things in envelopes that look like this. Here are my 2020 envelopes, and I'm also working for goals in 2021. So I also stuff these when I get my paycheck. Now, I stuff my cash envelopes every single time I'm paid. Why? Because I am a cash or I'm a paycheck budgeter. I budget my money, I create a plan for my money, I have a plan to spend my money every single time I'm paid, which is currently one time a month on the first of every month. So I, went go, I go down to the bank, the first step in my process is I leave the amount that I need to pay my bills. I pay all of these, my fixed expenses online. I leave that amount in my checking account to cover those bills, the rest I pull out in cash. Now, as you can see, I have these little cash envelope teller slips. I'll make sure to put a link in the description of the video for these. I literally fill this out based on how I filled out my cash envelope breakdown and I just hand it to the teller. They get me exactly what I need, the bill denominations I need to stuff my envelopes. Makes the process a whole lot easier. So as you can see, I already pulled out $1,366 for my cash envelopes. And you can see that here on my cash envelope breakdown. So the first step is I start stuffing my, and I like to save the little teller slips in my book. I start filling my cash envelopes. Now I'm gonna take these out of my wallet. I use the Filofax wallet. You can see my full review of my Filofax wallet right here. I'll put a link in the video, but I essentially take out all of my envelopes from my wallet and I start stuffing. So for my beauty envelope, I'm pulling out $80, which is a 50, a 20, and a 10. So I find that in the cash I pulled out. 50, a 20, and a 10. I'm gonna put this inside my beauty envelope. This envelope is stuffed. Now, you can see on my envelope here that I actually rolled over unused cash from May into June. And you can see I budget the $80, which I just stuffed, but I also have $150 in this envelope, which gives me a new total of 230. You can keep an updated balance of how much you have to spend in this beauty envelope by tracking your spending on the back of these envelopes. I'll also put a link. These are our new uh, June envelopes that we just put in the shop. We went with the summer theme and that's the ones I'm using in today's video. And I'll make sure to put a, a link in the description of this video for them. So that one is stuffed. I set it aside. The next one I have is pets. $70, a 50, and a 20. So I go back to the cash that I pulled out, a 50 and a 20. I stuff that. Now you can see with this, I had the same thing happen. I just stuffed my budget amount of $70 for pets. $70 is what I budget monthly for my pet envelope, but I rolled over $200 of unused cash from May into June. Now with my pet envelope, I roll it over month after month or paycheck after paycheck after paycheck because I like to have a lot extra than I need past my monthly budget because what if my dog Toby has to go to the vet. I like to have that cash, so I just roll over unused cash in my pet envelope. The next one you do is gas. So we're just gonna do a one and a 50. You stuff that, and you can see on the back of this envelope, I have 150 and my category is gas, that one is done. 
and you literally want to just go through your cash envelope breakdown slip and stuff all of your envelopes. So two 100s, 150, 110, oh, 250s. You need 250s in there. Ryan's, Ryan's here in the background saying, Miko, you forgot a 50. <laughs> All right, so one, two, so 310. So I stuffed that. My food envelope is done. Household is 80, which I need four 20s. 20, 40, 60, 80. So household is now done. Stuff that. Fun, 75, which is uh, 50. A uh, 20 and a five. Now, if you know I'm doing the $5 challenge, I don't include these fives in my $5 challenge because it's savings. So fun is stuffed. Miscellaneous is a hundred, which is just a hundred dollar bill. So that one's done. Now, I have an online and my June, uh, where I'm participating in the 2020 savings challenges, um, which is this is the envelope to save that money and I have my online shopping envelope. Now, my online shopping envelope is if I use my debit card but wanna replenish my checking account from the cash I have in my cash envelopes, I take the money from my cash envelopes, put it in the online shopping envelope and then deposit this at the bank the next time I'm down at the bank. That's what this envelope is for. So all of these variable spending envelopes are done. Now what we need to do is stuff, you can see I still have money left. We need to stuff my sinking funds envelopes. So let's start with 2020. Okay, I have a whole pile. I have Christmas, Costco, back to school, some birthdays, which is for my boyfriend and my son, clothing and 4th of July. Now you can see I've hit a lot of these sinking funds, both birthdays, back to school is done. So I keep them in my 2020 pile because I know I still have to spend them. So let's start with Christmas, okay? I did $180 for Christmas. So that's 100, that's a 50, that's a 20, that's a 10. So 180. That goes into my Christmas envelope. Now you can see my Christmas envelope is broken on me because it's so full of money. All right, so the next thing I do, when I stuff my sinking funds envelopes, I just write the, whoops, date. I'm starting with 1027 in here. I'm adding 180, which gives me a new balance of 1207. So now I know how much I have in my Christmas sinking fund, I also will color in my little chart so I can color in one more line on my sinking fund envelopes. So that's Christmas, that has been done. Set that aside. So the next one I have is Costco. I did $100, I created a little sinking fund for myself to save up for my large Costco hauls. And I save up a little bit each month. I currently go to Costco about once every three to four months. We're a really small family, so we don't go very often. But I do like to have that money set aside. So today's date, 6-1, I'm beginning with zero. I'm adding 100, which gives me a new balance of 100. I can now fill in two lines on my sinking funds envelope. So that one's done. So back to school, I finished my goal. I finished Chris's birthday, James's birthday, and 4th of July, and I'm not adding anything to my clothing envelope. I currently do not need any new clothes. So that's my 2020 envelopes. Now let's look at 2021. So we have house maintenance. My goal for my house maintenance is $12,000, but I want to have 500 of that in cash. I just started this goal this year. So I currently have $100 already in there. So if you go to my house maintenance, 
you can see it's $100, just one $100 bill. So I'm gonna stick that in my envelope, write that down. I'm beginning with 100, I'm adding 100, I now have 200 in there. So that one is stuffed and I can't fill in another line. Oh yeah, I can because I have 200. So I can fill in two more lines here. The next one is back to school, $32, which is a 20 and a 10 and two ones. All right, so six one, I'm starting with $17. And back to school, I'm doing $32 there, which gives me a new balance of 49. So I can, I can actually now color in two of these lines. So the next one I have is uh, my boyfriend's birthday. So babe's birthday, I do $34. So that is a 20. 10 and four ones, stuff that in there, write the date, six, one, I'm starting with 102 plus the 34 gives me 136. So I can fill in two more lines on his, you can see I'm even for next year, I'm almost saved up for his expense for that birthday. It's a great thing about sinking funds. So this is my son's birthday. So I'm gonna do $23. So 20, one, two, and three. And you can see I have a goal of $400 for that, for that goal. So six, one, I'm starting with 92. I just added 23. That gives me a new goal or a new amount of 116 in that sinking fund, which means I can fill in one more line on my sinking funds tracker. Next one is 4th of July. I'm doing $17, a 10, a five, and two ones. So put that in the envelope. You can see I have a $100 goal for that. So I started with 68, I'm adding 17, I'm not taking anything away, gives me a new balance of 85. I can fill in two more lines for that. And my last one is Valentine's Day. Now when you get to your last envelope, you know if you stuffed your envelopes right, if you have exactly what you need for that last envelope. I can't count how many times I accidentally fluffed up my process when I was trying to stuff my cash envelopes and I had like two 20s left. I'm like, okay, I need to go back through what I just did and, and see what happened. So I'm exactly right, $15 for Valentine's Day. You can see I've been using these envelopes for so long, some of them have just kind of fallen apart, so I need to tape them back up. So six, one, I'm starting with 60, I'm adding 15, I'm now left with $75 balance. I have a 180 goal for that in 2021. And I want that by January of 2021 is my goal due date, which means I can fill in another line on my sinking funds tracker. So those are my cash envelopes. Now that is the process that I do to stuff my cash envelopes. First step, track your spending. Your spending is going to tell you what categories you're realistically spending in and the amounts you should be starting with for your budget limits. Next, you wanna make sure that you identify your variable spending. What cash envelopes are you going to use? Keep it simplistic. Don't go out and have 30 different envelopes. What I try to tell people is use cash envelopes that are giving you problems or spending problems in your budget. Where are the, the categories that you are more, most likely to overspend? Start there, start using cash to hone in your spending. I use seven, I've used these seven for many, many, many years with uh, the addition of course my pets envelope. Next, fill out the cash envelope breakdown. What bill denominations do you need to stuff your envelopes? Then fill out your cash teller slip, bring that down with you 
to the bank so you can get the correct bill denominations. Stuff your envelopes, update on your sinking funds. If you save for sinking funds and cash envelopes like this, update your savings contributions here. And then for your regular budget categories, make sure that you are writing in your dollar amount so you can keep an updated balance on your spending. And if you roll anything over, like I did say for food, or not food, let's go to pets, make sure that you write down that rollover so you have an updated balance, your budgeted amount plus any money you rolled over from a previous month where you had unused cash. After all that is said and done, I wanna show you one more thing very quickly. This is my June budget. Like I said, I went down to the bank I, and I pay, I'm gonna pay, I left the amount that I need to pay my bills online and then I'm gonna do my cash envelopes. I wanna show you very quickly, when you take out cash envelopes, take out cash for your envelopes out of your checking account, it needs to be tracked on your checking account because it decreased the balance in your checking account, right? You took out cash from your checking account so it decreased the balance. You need to put a line through it or something that reminds you, hey, when closing out your budget or when you are working through the math of income minus expenses should be zero if you're using a zero-based budget, to not include this transaction when closing out your budget because you're gonna be tracking that cash on your cash expense tracker. You're gonna be tracking the spending of that cash on your cash expense tracker. Now I have an expense tracker for cash and I have an expense tracker for my checking account, two separate expense trackers. And if you were to include this 1366, the amount I pulled out for my cash envelopes in your checking account, and your cash spending, you're gonna be documenting that twice. So this is the full process on how I close out my cash envelopes. And also, don't forget to fill in if you have any type of trackers for your sinking funds. So that is the full step-by-step -step process on pulling out and stuffing my cash from my cash envelopes. If you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe. Oh my. <laughs> Hi, Tobe. Are you gonna let me do the video? <clears throat> you wanna be in the video? <laughs>